This is what it sounds like in the most remote part of Alaska. To get here, I flew on a bush plane for hours over uninterrupted wilderness into the heart of the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. As remote and wild as it is here, it's far from isolated. You'll come around a bend in the river and see, in a strange new landscape, some familiar old friends on summer vacation. Geese and mallards and swans, falcons and thrushes and sparrows and sandpipers, each a reminder that the refuge is directly linked by avian migration to every U.S. state and every continent but Australia. Although it's far from factories and traffic jams and other major sources of carbon pollution, human-driven climate change is warming it faster than anywhere else on Earth, as much as two times faster. The decision to protect the Arctic refuge traces to a young forester named Bob Marshall, a New Yorker who dreamed of being an explorer. Marshall believed the Alaskan Arctic carried a significance far bigger than itself, as a national last chance at the sort of wilderness that had shaped the character of America. The land was officially protected in 1960, at the end of the Eisenhower administration. But within a decade, oil deposits were discovered elsewhere on the North Slope, sparking a fight over whether to permit drilling that continued for nearly four decades. And then, last December, this happened. That's Alaska Senator Lisa Murkowski, who's worked to open the Arctic refuge to drilling throughout her political career. She's standing next to a beaming President Trump on an outdoor podium in Washington, D.C. on an unseasonably warm day. The president had just signed a massive tax bill with a largely overlooked writer. Just like that, the law now requires oil leasing on the coastal plain of the Arctic Refuge, which is also the place where the porcupine herd of caribou goes to give birth every spring. It's strange to move through a landscape that is both timeless and running out of time. Though I tried, I couldn't imagine the land sliced with roads and dotted with well pads. It makes me think of Olas and Marty Murray, husband and wife naturalists who traveled widely in the Arctic and argued passionately for preserving this area. For the Murrays, the debate over the fate of the Arctic wilderness represented the real problem of what the human species is to do with the Earth. Although this is a question we found ourselves answering over and over, we can't assume we'll always have another opportunity to ask it again.